Let me go here. Let me go here. Good morning, everyone. It's a new day. We're back in Switzerland now, and we are searching for ibex. We are now at a location which is pretty famous for having ibex, known as Creux de Vent, something like that. And the conditions are as good as they could possibly be, with lots of snow, both on the ground and in the air. So if we do find any, I think we could get some really nice images. We found a really great first sign, uh, which we think are ibex tracks going, going this way through this really scenic frosty forest. So we're going to follow these tracks and maybe, crossing our fingers, we'll find some ibex. really used to people it seems. So instantly I've got out my 70 to 200 millimeter to try and catch some of these amazing surroundings. The conditions could not have been any better really. Look at this. Simply magical. The scenes here are just like taken out of a fairy tale. It's simply amazing. And since there's so much snow in the air, her fur is getting completely covered in it, which uh, makes for some really cool textures. And I think a nice detail for the images. What do you think, Matos? Yeah, I switch for a wide angle lens, which is great in such conditions. Yeah, we are in paradise, basically.
female ibex started moving along the ridge line for quite a while and and we decided to follow her but the landscape here the terrain got more and more difficult to navigate through and uh, yeah it got quite gnarly at times and uh, I decided to take off my snowshoes and just leave everything behind except for the 70 to 200 and the camera and follow her and I followed her for about 150 meters she was really relaxed stopping and grazing and uh, not really paying too much attention in my way but now she's headed down this way down below me and there is just no way I can follow her it's important to respect their space and and also you really gain some respect for these animals that manage to so easily navigate through this really really difficult terrain such an amazing species and just an amazing place is it shaped like a horseshoe so we found the ibex on the other side of this horseshoe so now I've wandered um, along the ridge and then search for specifically for tracks because it's snowing and blowing so much that any tracks we find are most likely relatively fresh and I have just come across a few tracks there's just one tiny little downside this is where they're going and as you might see they continue across the edge and down into the cliffs. And here, for example, you can see tracks going across here. And, I mean, you just have to admire their strength and agility for managing to, to get through this really brutal terrain. I've soon walked eight kilometers through the snow here and I must say it's rather tiring work and since I photographed the other ibex I haven't seen a single one. So now I'm gonna eat some food and get ready to hopefully get going again very soon. I've just packed down everything and getting ready to turn back to the car because it's going to be dark in not too long and because of all the snow that's falling the ibex most likely are going down into the valley and into the forest where they can find food more easily but then they're also less accessible for us although we only had one encounter with an ibex that one encounter was really nice and made this whole trip definitely, definitely worth it.
my face is all red after the battering wind but now I've made it into the cover of the forest and I'm following some tracks which I believe are chamois tracks they seem to be really fresh and the longer I follow them the fresher they look so I'm curious to see how far away they are the forest here gets thicker and thicker the longer I follow uh, the tracks so I can't guarantee being able to follow them all the way judging by the spacing of the tracks I think they were probably running and since they're so fresh the only thing I can imagine them running from is probably me these guys are probably pretty shy so even though I haven't seen them yet they've probably seen or heard or smelled me but there's not really any point in following them anymore uh, so I think I'll just leave them be and continue down towards the car Good morning everyone, it's a new day. Today we have ambitions of photographing the chamois. But at this location, in contrast to yesterday where they were really skittish, uh, today we should be at a place where they are relatively used to people. So if we do manage to find them, we could get really close and uh, get some nice portraits. That's at least what we're hoping for. So, come along, let's see how this unravels. We've been walking for just like 15 minutes and already we've found quite a few rather fresh looking tracks. There is no doubt about it, we are in the right location. We've just found our first chamois and they seem to be pretty curious. very first, the chamois showed no sign of fear, only curiosity. However, as they made their way out of the forest and into the open meadows, they drastically altered their behavior. All of a sudden, they were very skeptical of our presence and seemed to perceive us as a threat. But with a bit of trial and error, we figured out how to approach and photograph the beautiful goat antelopes of the Alps. So it turns out that the technique to photograph these guys, which are supposedly uh, quite used to humans, is to let them know that you're there and let them know that you're no threat, you're not trying to stalk them, and, uh, and then let them come to you. And we just had an amazing encounter. What you say, Matush? Yeah, that was brilliant. Amazing. You don't get to see that every day. Yeah. So happy we came here. Yeah. Thank you. 